Hi, good morning and welcome to today's product in focus. Looking at the US 30 there, you can see it's been volatile the last couple of sessions uh, with Friday the 2nd of Jan uh, having uh, a candle that's indicative of a move higher but then it collapsed later on in the session to bounce off the 21 period SMA. Moving on to uh, today's candle on the 5th of January, you can see that we're still hovering around about 17 and 738. And most other global equity markets are actually down um, this morning. Uh, the US 30 is kind of playing catch up with some of the other markets. Um, over the um, Christmas period, there's a couple of bits of US data that came out that was a little bit substandard and that's had a little bit of pressure onto there. Um, but we're still seeing some interesting moves in the US dollar that I'll come back to in a little second. So looking at the UK 100, again, incredible amounts of volatility that, we, uh, that we've had here already in today's session. Um, you can see there that we briefly ticked above 65.89. I'm going to get pushed right back down. We're almost back into the negative territory today. And looking at the intraday charts, it, it has been very volatile. Up a minute, down the next, up again, then down again. Um, and now we're trading below with the 21 and 55 period SMA, which adds a little bit of weakness onto UK 100, um, which could be showing uh, a move down to 65.15, uh, should that pressure continue. So then looking at Japan 225, um, long legged candles, failing to break through 17, um, let's just say 17,500, trading below that 21 period SMA, and the other technicals are relatively neutral. Um, and these last couple of candles actually have been, have been pretty ugly. Now dollar yen is back above 120, but it seems to be more um, more of an equity sell off right across the board, as uh, most other markets are actually now just beginning to talk more about potential quantitative easing, um, especially over in Japan and over in the Eurozone as well. So moving on to that dollar yen uh, position, as you can see there we've managed to get back above 120, we're now going to be eyeing up 121 spot 87, uh, we are trading above the 21 period SMA which should be good in the short term, other technicals are, are quite neutral apart from the slow stochastic which is slightly overbought right now, um, and the fact that we're not able to break above this short term potential resistance around about 120 spot 84, um, that might still be something that's going to be quite difficult for dollar yen to break as of today. Everybody will still be talking about West Texas uh, crude, which is down at 51.55, so getting quite close to the psychological $50 um, round number. Uh, this has not had that much love, but what's quite interesting is when we broke below 54 spot 85, we've had a retracement up there on Friday, um, which then resulted in the bout of selling again, which uh, helped push that back down again. So this could be an interesting pivot level, 54.85 if we do get any rebound back up to there at any point in the future. So having a look at gold there, uh, gold's not really doing huge amounts, still bouncing around 11.86, below the moving averages, other technicals are quite neutral, almost got a crossover in the MACD, ready to break the zero line. Um, depends for that dollar strength is uh, if that's going to continue on. Um, we'll be looking at your dollar and cable right now. Um, so you can see your dollar completely smashed through 120, uh, actually went all the way to 118.70 and the back of comments that Mario Draghi made there um, at the weekend, which a lot of people have taken um, verbatim to mean that they're going to do quantitative easing, possibly uh, announcing it as soon as the 22nd of January. That sounds pretty close to be fair, uh, and uh, they, he really um, does not really want to do this. He's been talking about it for a long, long period of time, um, and the market has actually rise off those lows back up to 119.53 right now, but 120 was broken. Um, we've actually got to go a lot further back now to get the next potential uh, resistance, let's look uh, at potential support. Um, let's go here onto the max time interval, just to give you a bit of a flavour of where this could go. Uh, well, actually, we're down there already at 118 spot 72. Uh, the next one after that is going to be down here. So you're probably looking at a, a potential move to 116.61. Uh, if I could just throw that on just slightly better, uh, let's say 116.40. Um, and that would be a very, very low level in your dollar. This is already a five and a half year low against USD. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a flavor of how things have panned out. And you can see how cable's been just getting absolutely smashed there um, on Friday, a real negative day on Friday, uh, and then breaking below potential support once about 54, 24. Um, and today again, uh, a hammer formation similar to what you've got on your dollar right now, uh, with a longer term potential support all the way down at one spot 48, 13. Um, so that gives you a bit of a flavor of what's going on. So we do have um, German um, CPI data due today at one. Uh, and if we fast forward on to Tuesday, uh, we do have uh, Chinese PMI data. Uh, you've got Eurozone PMI data, UK PMI data, uh, and um, 
oh, throughout the whole day, and it looks to be that Tuesday's PMI day, and uh, factory orders later on in that session. And then if we go on to Wednesday, uh, you've got European CPI, and then you've got the ADP private payrolls and trade balance data, which everybody will be looking forward to for non-farm payrolls on Friday. As ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your layout, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.